I'm talking to you, Montreal. You know how much I love Cole Caulfield. We've made videos about this guy the past two years, talking about the hype and talking about the NCAA and talking about the hat tricks and the games and the points and all that. We have been hyping him up for so long, so there is nobody in this world that is more surprised that I'm making this video than myself, especially considering the circumstances of the other player we're going to be talking about here today. But I wanted to talk about one part of the Montreal Canadiens, and no, not the entirety of their games or their performances, we're saving that for a video later today, because I also wanted to talk about somebody else in the Canadiens and Sharks game that really made an impact on me that happens to do with the Canucks. So it's kind of two split videos here today to kick off the show, but when it comes to Cole Caulfield, there have been some rumblings, I guess, some concerns, I guess you could say, when it comes to how he has played so far in the 2021-2022 NHL season. Lo and behold, three games played, zero points, and I mean, it's not really just him, because there are so many players on the Montreal Canadiens who are pointless. They literally have had zero production so far in the young NHL season. Or, excuse me, did I say three games played? Four games played, I meant. Jonathan Drouin is not one of them. He has, take a look at the numbers right here, two points in four games, two goals right here. But everybody else in the Canadiens, Dvorak has an assist, Anderson has an assist, Armia with an assist, Perot with an assist, Weidman with a goal, and Kulak with two assists. That is it. We have seven players who have scored points for the Montreal Canadiens in four games played. And just in general, three goals scored to begin with. So the Canadiens have problems, but when it comes to just the raw, hard numbers of it, Cole Caulfield is going out there, zero points, four games played, definitely not the best in the world right there. This kind of makes things a little bit complicated when you talk about one of the things that we have been expecting out of Caulfield throughout the past offseason, throughout the summer. People were saying, okay, we're going to place money on the bets, you know, the bets for the Calder. The Calder is the award that is given out to the NHL's Rookie of the Year, and because of the nature of how the voting is done, the Calder is usually just a points race. And I'm not going to go out there and dispute that. You can go over the historical records and see it's pretty much just whoever has the most points. Unless you're a goaltender in which you absolutely steal as many games as possible. You get 20 plus wins or whatever. The Calder is usually a points race. So... Heading into this year, Canadians fans were like, okay, Cole Caulfield's going to go out there. He's probably going to have himself 20 goals, probably going to have himself, I don't know, maybe 20 assists, get 40, 45 plus points. Maybe he even gets 30 goals and he gets 50 points because the Montreal Canadiens are going to use this guy in a scoring role, put him on the power play and allow him to prosper. In fact, Cole Caulfield in the postseason last year was really good. You look at the production that this guy had before his rookie season, 12 points points in 20 games played, if you do the math on that, multiplied out by 82, he would have been on pace for 50 points, and that's not even in his rookie year. That's before his rookie year, right? So we had a whole bunch of leeway, I guess you could say, to expect a greater capacity for scoring points in the 2021-2022 season, right? But no. Caulfield is one of the many parts in the Canadians right now that just isn't getting it done. And again, it's not really a reflection of him and his poor hockey playing abilities. No, that's not what I'm saying here. I love this guy. And you know I love this guy. We've been talking about him for years. It's just there are so many things wrong with the Canadians right now. And Caulfield certainly isn't helping. Him playing with Toffoli, having a very similar role to the same kind of player on the other side, just isn't working. And if you take a look at what's going on right now, Matthew Perot is now centering Toffoli and Caulfield on the third line. So, yeah, you can go out there and place your bets on how well that experiment is going to work out. But when it comes to that Calder race, you know, the points race, as we highlighted earlier in the video, there's a name that I wanted to talk about that is indeed tied for first in the rookie scoring category. He got hit into the boards yesterday, but he said he's feeling okay. Let's go over Detroit Red Wings prospect turn rookie Lucas Raymond, because this guy went out there yesterday and he scored himself his very first NHL goal that should have been 
probably assisted by Moritz Seider. If they gave out tertiary assists, he would have gotten one. He didn't get an assist because he was actually the fourth man on the play to touch the puck. It was Seider over to Letty in the defensive zone. Letty with a really nice breakout pass to Dylan Larkin, who comes streaking in. He drops the puck off and lets it go forward to Lucas Raymond, who comes and he shoots it, and he scores an absolute snipe of a goal, the very first National Hockey League goal for Lucas Raymond. And then you see yourselves later in the third period. Lucas Raymond goes off the boards to himself. He hustles up the wing, centers it over to Dylan Larkin, who finds Tyler Bertuzzi, who shoots it and scores it. Against the Columbus Blue Jackets, Lucas Raymond gets a goal and an assist, putting him here in the scoring lead for rookies with three points on the year. Now, I get it. Oh, three points, Lego, you're overreacting again. This is a video where you take a small sample size and you make a big deal out of it. Well, what else am I supposed to do? It's been three, four games for a lot of these teams right here. Lucas Raymond is at three games. He's at three points. He's a point-per-game player. Not to mention the fact that Moritz Sider is over here as a point-per-game player as well. Probably could have had another point on the Raymond goal. It's just they don't give out tertiary assists, so... That's why he didn't get a point, but he was very much involved in setting that up, too. Lucas Raymond is all of a sudden a Calder candidate, and when it comes to... The odds, I guess? We talked about the betting odds earlier, right? Putting down money on players to win the awards. Lucas Raymond was always a top odds guy for Odd Shark, which was the betting odds that we had heading into the year. And a lot of Red Wings fans were kind of iffy about that. You know, I'm not going to lie. I'm a Red Wings fan, not to mention a Canadiens fan, not to mention a bigger Canucks fan. But when it comes to the idea of Raymond being a Calder candidate, there were so many Red Wings fans. I saw in my comments, on Twitter, on social media saying, yeah, I don't even know if Raymond's going to make the team. Like, he's coming over from Sweden. He wasn't the best point producer in Sweden. Granted, he was 18, which is very impressive, but he wasn't putting up like an Elias Pettersson year in the SHL, where he was the best player above and beyond over a point per game breaking these records. He wasn't that. And I think just the production that he had in his last year's worth of play made a lot of Red Wings fans kind of iffy as to whether or not you should expect him to make the team, and you should expect him to be a first-line winger, and you should expect him to win the Calder, because the production last season just wasn't at that kind of level where you would project him to being a number one point-per-game NHL star. Again, the Calder's a points race, so... That's very valuable when you look at the awards and how these kinds of things are handed out. There were a lot of Red Wings fans that said, oh, maybe we could go out there and give Raymond some time in Grand Rapids, allow him to play his game in the AHL and show off his skills on North American ice and get him used to the systems here in North America. But no! Jeff Blaschel's wife, man, helping out on the process here. He was so good in the rookie tournament. He was so good in the prospect showcase. He was so good at training camp. He was so good in the preseason that he forced his way onto this team. And now he is playing with Dylan Larkin and Tyler Bertuzzi, the two best forwards on the team. He is one of the best forwards on the team. He is a point-per-game player right now. And he is one of the top rookies. Lucas Raymond is a legit Calder candidate at this point, and I'd been starting to see the opinion slowly trickle in on Twitter. This is what Tony Ferrari said. He works for the Hockey News. He used to work for Dauber Prospects. All right, I'm ready to put this hot take out there. I've been sitting on this since the preseason. Lucas Raymond will finish his rookie season with more points than Tim Stutzla and Alexi Lafreniere in their respective sophomore campaigns. Now, he then says afterwards, oh, and he gets hurt, hopefully it's just him getting shaken up. Raymond did say in the post-game interview after the Columbus game that he did feel okay after the Roslovic hit, so we'll hope that he comes back and he plays a full 82-game season, but this is the status of this player at the moment. He isn't just a fourth overall pick from 2020, no, he is a lot better than that kind of label would imply. So... For Cole Caulfield, Canadians fans, unfortunately, it does not look like he has made a very strong push for the Calder so far. We'll talk a little bit more about the Canadians in today's 12 p.m. PDT video, but when it comes to who is leading the Calder race, Red Wings guys, I think you guys have a lot to be excited for. So talk to me in the comments. What do you think about Cole Caulfield and Lucas Raymond? I hope you enjoyed this Vitrash Rolls 99. And bye. <laughs>